This is part 44 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the difference between add singleton, add scoped, and add transient methods in ASP.NET Core with an example. This is the same application that we've been working with so far in this video series. Here is our iEmployee repository interface. In this example, we'll only be using these two methods, get all employees and add. As the name implies, this get all employees method returns us the list of all employees and this add method adds the new employee that we provide to this method as an argument to our repository. And this is just the interface. Here is the class that implements our interface I employee repository. Here is the implementation for add method. As you can see, the new employee object that we are providing as an argument to this method, it is adding that employee to the private field underscore employee list, which is obviously a list of employee objects. And then if we look at get all employees method, this method is returning us the list of all employees that we have again in this private field underscore employee list. The important point to keep in mind is this is an in-memory list, meaning every time we restart our application, we'll lose the changes that we make to this private field underscore employee list. Whenever we create an instance of this class mock employee repository, obviously its constructor is called. And as you can see within the constructor, we are initializing this private field underscore employee list with three employee objects to start with. Here is our startup.cs file and within this file we have our startup class and within the class configure services method. As the name implies, this is the function that we use to configure services required for our application. At the moment, we have this interface iEmployee repository and this mock employee repository class provides the implementation for that interface. So to tie these two together, we are using add singleton method of this interface I service collection. So basically, by including this line here, we are saying if someone asks for I employee repository, then provide them an instance of this mock employee repository class. In addition to add singleton method, we also have these two methods add scoped and add transient. For now, let's use this add singleton method and see the behavior that we get. Here is our home controller. Notice the home controller has a dependency on I employee repository. We are injecting I employee repository into the home controller using its constructor. We are then using this injected dependency within the create action method. This is the create action method that responds to the HTTP POST request. Here is our create employee form. After we provide all the details of the new employee and then when we click this create button, this form is posted to the server. This HTTP POST request is handled by this create action method. The new employee that we want to create is passed as a parameter to this create action method, which we are then passing to the add method of employee repository. This method adds it to the employee repository. After we have successfully added the employee object to the repository, we are then redirecting the user to the details action method. So we could see the details of that newly added employee. For the time being, let's not redirect the user to the details action. After we successfully add the employee, we want to stay on the create view itself. So let's comment this line, which redirects us to the details action method. Next, on our create view, we want to display the total number of employees that we have in our employee repository. For that, let's make a copy of this development and then change the bits that are required. We want to display the total employees count right here. We don't need another create button, so let's get rid of that first. We want to include this literal text total employees count equals now, there are several approaches to compute the total number of employees that we have in our employee repository. The approach that I'm going to take is inject employee repository service into this view as well. Now, remember to inject the employee repository service into our home controller, we are using the constructor. To be able to inject a service into view, we use at inject directive. In our case, the service that we want to inject is iEmployee repository. Let's call the variable underscore EMP repository. We can now use the service instance to compute the total number of employees. So at this location, we want to switch to C sharp mode. So we use at on this service, we have get all employees method, which is going to return us the list of all employees. On this, when we use the count method, we get the total number of employees. 
Now, here's the important bit to understand. After we provide the details of the new employee that we want to create and issue a post request by clicking this create button, to handle this post request, our application needs an instance of I employee repository in two places. First, within our home controller in this create action method that responds to the post request. So to be able to add the new employee to our employee repository, we need an instance of I employee repository service. Next, we also need an instance of this service in our create view. Why do we need it in the create view? To be able to compute the total number of employees that we have in the employee repository. And at the moment, we have registered our service using add singleton method. So with all these changes in place, let's see the behavior that we get. Notice when we issue a get request to slash home slash create, we see the total employees count is three. Let's understand what's happening behind the scenes. To serve this request, an instance of home controller is created. And if we take a look at our home controller, notice it has a dependency on I employee repository. This is the first time an instance of I employee repository is requested. So ASP.NET Core creates an instance of the class that implements this interface. As you can see in this configure services method, in our case, an instance of mock employee repository class is created and injected into the home controller. We have issued a GET request to the create action of our home controller. So within our home controller, this is the create action method that handles the incoming HTTP GET request. All we are doing within this action method is executing return view statement. Since the name of the action method is create, this create view is then executed. If we scroll all the way to the top, you can see this view also has a dependency on I employee repository. Since we are using add singleton method to register our service, instead of creating another instance of this mock employee repository class for the create view, it is going to reuse the instance that ASP.NET Core has created when this home controller has first requested an instance of I employee repository. So that same instance will also be injected into the create view. The view then uses the service instance to calculate the total number of employees. If you recollect, when we create an instance of the service class within the constructor, we are populating this private field underscore employee list with three employee objects. So the total count of employees that we see here is three. Now let's add a new employee and see what happens to the total count. Notice when I click the create button, the total employees count is four. If I click it again, it increases to five. One more time, six, it goes on. So every time we click this button, the employee count increases by one. The important point to keep in mind is every time we click this create button, we are issuing a new HTTP request. Since we are using add singleton method to register our service, there's only one instance of the service created when the application first requests an instance of the service. That instance is then reused throughout our application across all the HTTP requests. That is the reason every time we click this create button, the total employees count increases by one. With a singleton service, there's only a single instance. An instance is created when the service is first requested. And that single instance is used by all HTTP requests throughout the application. Now let's use add scoped method instead of add singleton method to register our service and see the behavior that we get. With a scoped service, we get the same instance within the scope of a given HTTP request, but a new instance across different HTTP requests. Let's understand what this means with an example. We made a change to our application code. So when we issue a GET request, the application restarts and we should see the count of employees as three. There we go. Now let's provide the details of a new employee and click the create button. Notice the employees count increased to four. From this point, no matter how many times we click this create button, the total employees count stays at four. Let's understand why we are getting this behavior. When we issued a get request to slash home slash create, we get a new service instance. Because remember, with a scoped service, every new HTTP request gets a new service instance. With a new service instance, we are creating three employee objects. So when we issued a get request to slash home slash create, we saw the total employees count 
as three, we then provided the details of a new employee and then issued a post request by clicking the create button. When we issue a post request within our home controller, this is the create action method that handles that incoming post request. Remember, when we issue a post request, it is another new request. So we get another new instance of the service. With a new instance of the service, by default, we have a total of three employees. But then the create view within our home controller is adding another new employee. So that total count increases to four. Our create view can see that increased count because after adding the employee to the employee repository, we are re-rendering the create view. And if we take a look at the create view, create view also has a dependency on I employee repository service. But here, a new instance of the service will not be provided. The instance that we have used to add the employee to the employee repository, that same instance is reused in the create view. Why is that? Well, that's because both these actions, that is adding the employee to the employee repository and rendering this create view are happening as part of the same HTTP request. They are happening in the same scope of that HTTP request. And remember, with a scoped service, we get the same instance within the scope of a given HTTP request, but a new instance across different HTTP requests. So when this create button is clicked, adding this new employee to the employee repository and re-rendering this create view. Both these actions are happening in the scope of this same HTTP POST request. So we see the total employees count increase to four. After the value is increased to four, no matter how many times we click this create button, the count does not go beyond four. Why is that? Well, that's because Every time we click this create button, we issue a new HTTP request. And remember, with a scoped service, with every new HTTP request, we get a new service instance. And with a new service instance, the default initial count of employees is three. And when we click the create button, we add the fourth employee. So we see the total employees count as four. Next time I click the create button, we get another new service instance. And with that new service instance, again, the initial count of employees is three. We add a new employee, the count becomes four. And that's what we see on the browser. So every time we click the create button, the same process repeats. And hence, the count doesn't go beyond four because with every request, a new service instance is created with a scoped service. Now let's use add transient method instead of add scoped method to register our service and see the behavior that we get. With a transient service, a new instance is provided every time an instance is requested, whether it is in the scope of the same HTTP request or across different HTTP requests. Notice when we issue a GET request to slash home slash create, we see three as the total count of employees. Now let's provide the details of a new employee and then click the create button. Notice no matter how many times I click the create button, the total employees count does not move beyond three. Let's understand why this is happening. Remember with a transient service, a new instance is provided every time an instance is requested, whether it is in the scope of the same HTTP request or across different HTTP requests. So if we relate this to our example, notice our home controller is asking for an instance of I employee repository. With a transient service, we get a brand new instance. So with a new instance of a service, the initial default count of employees is three. And then the create action within our home controller is adding a new employee to the employee repository. So the count becomes four and then it re-renders the create view. And if we take a look at the create view, notice the create view is also asking for an instance of I employee repository. Remember again, with a transient service, every time we ask an instance, we get a brand new instance. So another new instance of the service is created. And with this new instance, again, the initial count is three. And that is what we see on the web page. So the point that I'm trying to make is home controller has its own instance of the service instance and the create view has its own instance of the service instance. So this obviously means that changes made by the home controller to its service instance cannot be seen by the create view and the vice versa is also true.
The table on the slide summarizes the difference between a scope service, transient service and a singleton service. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.